The Navy is helping to man the line again in another war. And for the Navy, a war with a difference. There are nuclear-powered ships and sailing junks. Huge cruisers and tiny minesweepers. Double sonic jets and propeller planes. World War II vintage. A startling combination of the old and the new. American sea power being used in a new and imaginative manner as more and more operations in Vietnam are being geared to U.S. strength in offshore waters. From the sky and from the sea. Across the beaches. And up the river. Young Navy men are fighting. It looks very little like a war aboard this ship. Until you see the stacks of bombs. It's a very different war. Yet very much like every other fight we have ever faced. There's no rice paddy mud on the flight deck, no Viet Cong, but Charlie and the mud are only minutes away by air. Navy carrier pilot, it's a commuter's war. A strike from the sea, carried to the enemy's ammunition and supply depots, to his missile sites, his troop barracks, his dam, his power plants. It's a different fight from the jungle war on the ground, yet just as deadly. There, Navy pilots are destroying communist potential and the Viet Cong shoot back. While men of the carriers load, launch, and recover, and rearm planes for hundreds of combat sorties, Navy gunners' mates provide another kind of strike from the sea. Shore bombardment, hitting Viet Cong concentrations in the south,
These destroyers make their contribution as they fire hundreds of rounds of three and five inch shells with computer accuracy. These fire missions often make the difference between stopping a Viet Cong attack or seeing it overrun our friendly. From sea to shore, from air to surface, in patrol planes, in modern swift boats, and in ageless junk. In Coast Guard cutters, and ever-present destroyers, Americans and Vietnamese work together at Operation Market Time. Named for the thousands of fishing junks that take to coastal waters every morning and return at evening to market the catch. Operation Market Time is a seagoing police force that patrols the near shore, the distant sea, and the myriad river channels stopping the flow of any Viet Cong supplies by sea. The thoroughness of the market time man is marked by the thousands of boats they have stopped and searched, by the tools of war, by the guns, the bullets, food, and men that are not getting through to the Viet Cong in the south by sea. The U.S. Marine Corps, its amphibious beachhead anchored to the sea, strikes inland by chopper, landing craft, and by Shanks Mare. Its flanks and rear protected by dominant naval power. it's not alone the Navy's war. The Army of the United States is ashore in multi-division strength, and the Air Force flies hundreds of combat sorties every day. The Coast Guard, too, is employing its special talents. It is a war that cannot be told completely in encounters with an enemy.
some things never change. The boredom, the waiting, the worry. In the 15-hour workday, all are among the occupational hazards of the sailor on station off Vietnam. Manning the aircraft and the guns of the 7th Fleet, thousands of U.S. Navy men perform routine and often unglamorous jobs miles from the jungle of South Vietnam, but close enough to the problem to know the importance of the jobs they do and confident in their ability to get the job done. Now to some people back home, the job may seem to have gone out of style. Some of these citizens, these taxpayers, may not realize that they are part owners on this very important business. And as partners keeping the store back home, they too have a vital stake in this operation of survival halfway around the world. Seven thousand miles presently lies between the conflict and the store. Seven thousand miles of Pacific Ocean, patrolled and controlled by the men and the might of the United States Navy.